So we have, uh, this is example four, problem three of page 927. Uh, so a company has two machines that are working at the start of the day. At any given day, each one of the machines can break down with a chance of one over three. And if a machine breaks down, they send it to for the repair and it will be back up and running two days from that day. So if a machine breaks down in day three, it will be sent for the repair. It will be for it will be out for the repair in the next day, and then it will be back for to work on day five. So one, we wanna uh, consider the number of machines that are working at the start of each day at the state of the system, and we see if we can develop, uh, if we can model this system as a stochastic process. Okay, so that's the plan. So now. Can you tell me uh, state space? First, tell me what does the state space show? John? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Uh, zero, one, or two. Okay, can you explain why? Uh, because you can have both machines broken, which would be zero machines running, mm -hmm. uh, one of the machines broken, which would be one machine running, or both machines running. Okay, that's great. So these are the possible values for the state of the system, okay? Thank you. And what I want to do is to put together the transition probability matrix P. What is the size of the transition probability matrix, uh, Kelsey? Um, the size of P, you have three states. What is the size of this matrix? Three possible states. Uh, three by three? Three by three. Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. So these values that we put in this transition probability matrix, what do they show? Let's see. Um, they show the possible, like how the state can be, whether it's like working or not working. Um, so for example, uh, with the value that I'm going to put here, what does it show? And that means that there are no machines available at all because they're both zero. Um, these are the transition probabilities. First of all, tell me what is the time step here? Which means when the transitions happens, going from one step to another, it happens over? One day. So the time steps are day. Okay, so going from zero to zero, which means at the start of today, there are zero machine working. What is the probability that the start of next day, there is still zero machine working in this system? Okay, what does this number show? The probability of two machines working? No, it shows the probability that if right now, today, the zero machine are working at the start of the day, tomorrow, next day, two machines are working. Okay, so remember these are, what we put here is probability of, probability of i, j, probability of going from state i to state j. So you have to be very, very careful with that. These are transition probability, probability that you are at any state i and, and you go to any state j. These are the transition probabilities that you specify. Okay, now um, it will be easier for you guys a little if you show this transition probability also in a graphical representation too. So we also use some graphical representation to show the uh, transition probability. So we use it as, uh, like we show each state with a circle. So we have a state that, um, let's see state two, uh, state one, and state zero, okay? So if I have three possible states, I put uh, three possible um, circles, each one of them represent one state. And when I wanna calculate the transition probabilities, if, I, if there is a transition between two possible states, then I uh, draw an arrow from one state to another, okay? So now let's look at um, state um, zero. Okay, so let's look at the state zero and see if we can go back, go to state zero as well. So with the state zero means at the start of the day, zero parts are working. 
Okay, I say zero means at the start of the day zero parts are working. So if that I mean, if at the start of the day zero parts are working, when did these part break down? At the start of the day? No. Two days ago? Oh. No. How previous about the, day. the previous day? Right? Why two days ago is not working? Who said that? Abdullah, was that you? No. That was me. Okay, Anton. Uh, if they had broken down two days ago, remember each when the machine goes on, it takes they send it to the Reaper and it takes two days, the same day and the day after, and then it's up in the next day. So if they had gone gone down two days ago, right now they should be up and running. So at the start of the day, I cannot have zero machine um, in the system working if they, they if they failed two days ago if they failed two days ago at the start of today both of them should be up and running is that clear anthony yeah okay, uh, okay so they at the start of today zero machines are working that means so as we just talked they couldn't have gone down two days ago this is at the start of the day. So it's not, it hasn't happened today. This is just at the start of the day. The only option that is available is that both of them have gone down the day before. Okay. Now, um, both of them have gone down the day before. Can they be up and running today? No. No. It, no. Take, it takes two days. It takes two days. So the fact that I can go from stage zero to zero is zero it doesn't happen okay in one day i cannot go from zero machine in the system to zero machine in the system okay um then okay how about going from zero machine in the system to one machine in the system Can that happen? That when zero machine is in at the start of the day, that means both of them have gone down uh, day before. That's also zero then? Okay, so that if both of them have gone down the day before, um, and we are at today, and we know that we have zero machines in the system, in the next day, that's the one that we want to specify. In the next day, both of these machines should be up and running. So the, the probability that only one of them is up and running the next day is zero. Okay. Right? Because zero right now means both these machines failed the day before. So, and I'm right now. And I, when these transition properties, PIJs, tell me, that if I start with zero machine right now, what is the chance that tomorrow I have one machine? And if, they, if I have zero right now, which means both of them have failed the day before, tomorrow, both of these machines should be up and running. So the fact that I have just one of them up and running would never happen, okay? So going from zero to one is zero as well. How about two, going from zero to two? Probability of one. Probability of one, why? Because it's, uh, since they broke down the day before. Yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah, if they broke down, if, if today is zero, that means they broke down the day before. That means tomorrow, both of them are up and running. That's for sure. But there was one other way to get the one. Uh, the all the probabilities need to add up to one. Yes, the sum of the probabilities of each row needs to add up to one. So that also helps you to know the last probability has value of one. So if I want to show these things here on this graph, so uh, that zero to zero, there is no transition. Zero to one, there is no transition. Zero to two, there is one transition. And we show it like this. And then we put the probability on top of the branch. So that means it's possible to go from say zero to two and this happens with probability of one, okay? So now, let's go to the second row. At the start of today, I have one machine working in the system. I wanna see 
what is the probability that tomorrow no machine is working in the system? Can that happen? So what is that probability? Yes, one third. Okay, if today I have zero machine, I have only one machine in the system, that means one of them has failed, right? And it can't have, it can't fail today because I'm looking at the start of the day. So when, when did the other machine fail? Yesterday. Yesterday. Because obviously it can't be two days ago, otherwise it would be up and running right now. So the other machine has failed a day ago. And now I'm, I'm going to find the probability for tomorrow. If, is it possible for me to, that tomorrow I have zero machine working? No. Why not? Because the one that broke down the day before would be fixed. Would be fixed for sure. Even the one that is working right now, this one machine that is working right now at the start of the day, even if this is going to fail, the one that has failed the day before will be up and running. So there's no way for me to go from one machine working today to zero machine working tomorrow. That won't happen. Okay, so this is zero. Uh, how about this one? How is it possible that I go from one machine working today to one machine working tomorrow? And tell me why. Yes. Wow. Because the there was already one machine broken. Mm -hmm. So and it broke next. Then? And it, it, broke then? it broke yesterday. Okay. So by tomorrow, there will be at least one available. Okay, that one is available. And so on. So let's say so for sure that one is available. But remember, I want to go from one to one. If that one that is that broke yesterday for sure is available tomorrow, what should happen to the other one that is already working? It should break. It should break. If I, if tomorrow I want only to have one machine and that's the one that failed the day before, then the machine that is working today definitely should fail so that I don't have it working tomorrow and I stay, stay with one machine. So what is the probability that that happens? So basically I go, I want to go from state one to state one, self-transition. And that's how we show it in the graph. So that's how we show it, going from one state to the same state in one transition. So what is the probability that that happened? One third. One third, why? Because uh, at the beginning of the day, um, a machine has a one third chance of breaking down. Exactly, because the machine that broke down the day before for sure will be up and run tomorrow. And if I want this machine that is working at the start of the day to break down so that tomorrow I have only one, so that tomorrow I have only one machine working, um, that's one tree, the probability of this machine, this one machine failing, okay? And I'm going to put the probability on the top, one over three in the graph. What is the probability that I go from one machine working right now to two machine working tomorrow? Two thirds. What, when does that happen? When you have the one that's already been worked on and then the one that is working breaks down. Um, so then you'll have two, two machines okay. working. So can you, so today, I, at the start of today, I have one machine working. So, and tomorrow, I want to see what is the probability that I have two machines working. Can you tell me when that happened again? Obviously, if at the start of today, I have one machine working, that means one of them broke when? Um, two days ago? Yes, sir. Because if, if it was two days ago, it was up and running today. Yeah, it is. If, if it's not, that, that means it, it broke yesterday. So it's, it's still in the reaper. So tomorrow, that machine is for sure up and running, right? The machine that broke yesterday is for sure up and running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one. So how can I get to two machines working tomorrow? That's when this machine that is working right now doesn't break down tomorrow, till tomorrow. Is that correct? Because one machine that broke yesterday for sure will be up and running tomorrow. 
And if I wanna have two machines that are up and running tomorrow, I just have to make sure this machine that is working today does not break till tomorrow. And what is the probability that happened? Two over three. With probability of two over three, they don't break in a specific day. And with probability of one over three, they do break. So I can go from a state of one machine at the start of the day to two machine at the start of the next day with probability of two over three. Does that make sense, Melissa? Yeah, it makes sense because the probability is have to be equal to one. Yeah. And also logically as well, it should make sense for you guys too. How about the last row? Uh, we are at uh, state two, which means two machines are working at the start of the day. Can we go to state zero? Yes. How? Uh, both machines broke that day. Yeah. So we can go from state two to zero if the first machine break with probability of one over three and the second machine break with probability of one over three and that's one over nine. So that's one over nine. So both of them are working at the start of the day and we wanna to go to zero at the start of next day. That means both machines break down today. Uh, how about two going from state two to state one, meaning that two machines are working at the start of today and tomorrow at the start of tomorrow, I wanna have only one machine working. Can that happen? Yes. How? One machine breaks. Okay, so one from state two. To one machine uh, the next day happens when, um, let's say the first machine is working the first machine breaks down and the second machine continues working or the f uh, sorry oh so it happens when the first machine breaks down and the second machine continues working or the first machine continues working and the second machine breaks down, okay? And that would be four, if we calculate that and add them together, that would be four over nine, okay? So when two machines are working at the start of today and we want only to have one machine working tomorrow, that means one of these machines break down, either the first one break down or the second one break down, and we have to add these policies. Uh, how about going from state two to state two? So two machines are working today and we want to have also two machines working tomorrow. Would that happen? Going from state two to state two. Two machines are working today and we wanna have two machines working tomorrow. Just subtract those probabilities from one. But how do you calculate it logically? Logically. Two machines are working today and we want both of them work tomorrow. Then they don't break. The first one doesn't fail. Two thirds times two thirds. Yeah, the first one doesn't fail and the second one doesn't fail. Four over nine. And I'm sorry, what was the logic for uh, going from two machines to one? That's one third times two thirds plus two thirds yeah. times two thirds. So, so both machines are working today and I wanna see what is the probability that only one of the machines works tomorrow. So out of two machines, only mach uh, it, it just happens if machine one breaks down, one over three, and the second machine works, two, two over three. So this, since it's and, we multiply them together. Gotcha. So one over three multiplied by two over three or plus. The first machine continues working two over three and the second machine breaks down. Again, another multiplication, that's one over three. 
Gotcha. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So that would be the turn, the one step transition probability matrix for this problem. And they just get familiar with this one too. Sometimes it helps to just show the transitions on one graph. So if there is no possible transition between two states, like for example, if uh, there are no possible transition between two states, like this one or this one, we don't put any arrow with this, between two, those two states. Okay. So this is called just a graphical representation of the state space and the transitions. Or the state diagram, they call it state diagram as well. Okay. Everyone is good? Question? No. Okay. Let's go to the other part of the class. So guys, when I, the transition probability matrix that I uh, explained in previous session was the one step transition probability matrix, right? right? Even the one that we developed just now is with one step transition probability matrix. We said that for us to be able to analyze any stochastic system, we have to be able to develop the one-step transition probability matrix for that problem. And uh, so that should be given. Once you have that, then you can do any analysis for that system. So, uh, so one-step transition probability matrix is something that is given to us. Also. So what we want to do right now is that uh, to see how we can calculate the probability of transitions in and in step. Remember, for any uh, stochastic system, the examples that we talk about, if you look at the day, the weather conditions, sunny, cloudy, yes, we have the one step transition probability that tells you if today is sunny, what is the chance that tomorrow is sunny or cloudy? However, that's not what I want. I want to know, okay, what, what if today is sunny and what is the chance that 10 days from now the weather is sunny or cloudy? Okay, for the weight uh, or for the health condition example, I want to see that, okay, a person is, a, let's say, um, a, a overweight condition at age 20, what is the probability that the person is in normal weight or overweight or obese condition 10 years later at age 30? Okay, so we know where the system is right now. We know the one is the transition probability matrix, but our goal is always prediction of where we can be like n period of time, uh, periods of time later. Okay, not just one step later, but 10 years later, 10 days later, I don't know, 20 days later, 20 quarters later, and so forth. So this is what we call as n step transition probability, transition probability because we want to specify the transition probabilities. What is the chance that we go from state I to state J in n transition? So what we do here is that we basically say um, if... Um, Right now, at time zero, I'm at state I. What is the chance that n step later at time n, I'm at state J? Okay, so that's what we want to specify. That's what I call as n step transition probability. And usually I show that with P, I, J, N. Okay. If we show it just with, with PIJ, this is one step transition probability matrix, but PIJ in parentheses N, that's N step. And one thing also that I mentioned in previous session was that these transition probabilities are not changing over time. So for example, if I tell you uh, at time M, I'm at state I, and I wanna know what is the probability that N step later, meaning that at time M plus N, I end up at the state J, what is this probability, given the notations that we have so far? It's a still PIJN. So it doesn't matter if I'm talking about right now I'm at a state I, or at time M I'm at a state I. All that matters is that I want to know the probability that I'm at the state J n step later. So n step later, if I'm right now, I'm at state i, it's going to be n plus n. If right now I'm at state zero, it's going to be zero plus n, which is n. Okay, so it doesn't matter that right now I'm talking about time zero or time m, m or time 10 or whatever. All that matters is that 
n step later, n transition later, I want to know what is the probability that I end up at state j. So for both of them, what we want to calculate is pijn, which is probability of transition from state i to state j in n transition. These are also, as I said, are what we call as n step transition probability. Okay, so this is what I want to calculate. If we know those, then we can predict the behavior of the system in the future. I can tell you, okay, right now I know I'm at the state whatever. What is the chance that I end up at the state um, J, for example, uh, 40 time steps from now? Depending on your model is 40 years, 40 quarters, 40 days, 40 hours, and so forth. Okay, so we want to be able to calculate that. Uh, and let's see how we can do that. Let's calculate P, I, J, 2 as an example, and then we can um, generalize it to more transitions. So can someone tell me what does P, I, J, 2 mean? Probability, if we're at state I of, the probability if we're at state I of going to J in two steps. Mm -hmm. Probability of transition from uh, state I to J in two time steps or two steps. That's what it is. Okay, let's see how it happens. So again, I, I showed the state diagram. So this is the state I. And this is state J. Okay. Um, look at, let's look at possible scenarios when this can happen. And this is the state, uh, this is the system that in a general sense, the possible states for this system or our state space is anywhere from, um, we can go anywhere from a state one, two, all the way to state S. Okay, so these are our possible states that we have in this problem, general case. So if I wanna go from state I to state J in two transition, one possible scenario is that I go from state I to a state one in one transition. What is that probability? Pi one. And then I go from one to J in the next transition. And what is that probability? E one J. E one J. Okay, so that's one possible scenario. Uh, I wanna go to a state J in two transitions. So let's assume I go from I to one and then from one to J. The next one I wanna go, what is the other possible scenario? So let's say I, go to state two, two first. So I go from state I to two, P I two, and then from two to J, P two J, okay? The, the other state can be I go from two state three and then go to state J and so forth. And I, all these can happen or I can go potentially to state S. I can go in one step to state S, P I S, and then go from state S to J, P S J. Okay, so do you agree that these are all possible scenarios that I can go from state I to state J into transition? Yes. I, either the first part happens, this part happens, or the second part happens, or the third one happens, all the way to or the S possible scenario, okay? So let's then look at this, calculate this probability. So I want to calculate the probability of going from state I to state J into transition. So what is the probability that the first scenario happens? You go from state I to state one and multiplication and from state one to state J. That's one possible scenario, right? That's the probability of the top branch. So that's probability of scenario one. Or, that, that's or, that's plus. The second scenario happens. I go from state I to two and from two to J, okay? Or the third scenario happens. The fourth scenario happens all the way to the last scenario happen. I go from state I to S and from state S to J. Right? So these are just the probabilities associated with this graph that I develop here. So I calculate the probability of each scenario and, and since we know this happens when scenario one happens or two happens or three, I just added these probabilities so that 
I consider the property of all these possible scenarios. Does that make sense? Now, I now let me write this as a sigma. So I can write this as a sigma. I can say this is property of going from state i to any middle state, let's say k, and then from k to j, right? And this middle state k is going to go from 1 all the way to s. So I just wrote, wrote down this long summation as a sigma for these middle states that are changing from one to S, I just use the notation K. And I say, okay, this is the middle state and this middle state K can vary anywhere from state one all the way to state S, okay? So that's basically probability of going from a state I to J in two transitions, okay? So, and do I know these probabilities? Do I know these ones? Do I know these green probabilities? Do I know them or not? In the problem statement? Yeah, because they are my one they are, they are my one step transition probabilities, right? So I told you for any stochastic system, we have to have one step transition properties that we get from the transition property matrix P to be able to do anything. So all these, trans, all these green uh, transition properties that I highlighted here, they are the one step transition properties, probability of I1, I2, 1J, blah, blah. All of them are one step transition properties that I for sure have in my one step transition property matrix, okay? So I basically have everything I need, all these elements, to be able to calcu calculate this sigma. Okay, so that's possible. So that just gives you a sense of how, for example, this transition probability, the, this one, two step, three step, n step transition probability matrices are calculated. But before we make a conclusion, keep this in mind, keep this um, formulation in mind, and let me calculate one more thing. All is good so far? Okay. I believe so. <laughs> okay, so let's calculate one more thing. So this is the, the general state. Then I have S possible state, right? State one, state two, all the way to state S, right? So if I want to calculate, just write down the one step transition probability matrix is the S by S matrix, right? Because I have S possible states. So it's going from state one to two all the way to state S and one to two all the way to state S, okay? Um, so this is obviously my P, the one is the transition probability matrix. Let's multiply P by itself, okay? So again, this is one, two, all the way to S. This is one, two, all the way to S, okay? And I want to multiply them together. What is the size of the resulting matrix? If I multiply a S by S matrix to a S by S matrix, what is the size of the resulting matrix? S by S. S by S. Okay. And again, this matrix has state one, two, all the way to state S, one, two, all the way to state S. Okay. So now, Let's do this. For one possible state i, okay, um, and here I'm, I'm going to look at one possible state j. Okay, so let's multiply this row by this column. Okay, first of all, tell me what are the elements of this row, the notations, p, i1, right? P I two all the way to P I S. What are the elements of this column? P one J, P two J, all the way to P S J. Is that correct? So if I wanna if I multiply these two this metric P by itself, P multiplied by P. 
then the elements of this resulting matrix. So if I want to calculate, for example, this first element, what, how do I calculate this? I multiply the first row by the first column, right? It goes here, the result goes here. How do I calculate this one? I multiply the first row by the second column. Those are just multi matrix multiplication, linear algebra. And the result goes here. How do I get this last one? I multiply the first row by the last column. And that goes and sits here. Um, how, for example, how do I get this one? This one. Which row is multiplied by which column? Bottom row by the first column. I multiply the last row by the first column of the second matrix. And whatever result is, I put it here. For this one, I multiply the last row by the last column. And then I put the result here. So if I multiply the i-th row by the j column, where does it sit? It goes to the row i, to the j column, and sits here, right? Or the intercept. Yeah, exactly, it sits over there. Now let's see what is then this number. So I'm going to multiply the i row by the j column. So what is the result? When you multiply a row, a, a, a vector, this vector by this vector, we know, we know how we do it, right? The first element is multiplied by the first element, and then it's added to second element that is multiplied by the second element and so forth. So the result is pi1, the first element here, multiplied by the first element in the column, p1j, plus the second element in the row, multiply by the second element in the column, all the way the third element, sorry. The third element in the row, multiply by the third element in the column, all the way to last element on the row, multiply by the last element in the column, right? And whatever this is, the result is going to sit here in the ij ij in the ij element of this resulting matrix that is coming out of the multiplication. Now, look at this. If I want to write it in the summation with the sigma, how do you write it? P, all of them start with I, right? I to any intermediate state K, and then going from K to J, right? All of these end with J, 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 J. And then K goes from one to S, right? So that's the, that's the sigma, I can put to represent this whole summation. Is that correct? And oh, so yeah. So, and, and just remember what I have here and what I have here. This summation is exactly this summation. Okay. So what does that mean? That means if you want to get the two-step transition going from state I to state J in two steps, the general things that we can do instead of going through these long summations and additions that would be extremely tedious, the thing we can do is to multiply find out the one step transition probability matrix P, multiply it by itself, 
the result is what I call as p to the power 2. And then go pick the ij element of that matrix. That will give you the probability of going from state i to state j in two transition. Okay, so that's, that's for sure a lot easier than going through all these long, um, long multiplications and additions and so forth. So if you multiply matrix P by itself, multiply matrix P by itself, you calculate P2. And in this matrix P2, every element that you pick, every element that you pick, tells you probability of going from state I to state J in two transitions. And you can generalize it to even more. If I calculate P, um, if I calculate, for example, P3, that means I multiply matrix P to itself three times then what does each element of this matrix show? I'm going to calculate P3, meaning that I multiply that one step transition probability matrix by itself three times. So at the, as a result, finally, I have a matrix. So I have the transition probability matrix, this one, and I'm going to multiply it by itself three times. So I'm going to calculate P3, which is again to be a, is going to be a matrix, right? I, if I pick any element of this matrix, the, I pick the IJ element of this matrix, what does this probability show? The probability of I going to J in the third time step? probability of going from state i to state j in three time steps. And if I multiply, and if I calculate p to the power of n, this, the elements, the, uh, each element of this matrix shows probability of going from state i to state j in n transition. This is just a general rule. And we call this Pn. This Pn is the one that we call as n-step transition probability matrix. Okay. So this Pn is the one that we call as n-step transition probability matrix. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's look at one example together and see how we can do that. So in this example, we are looking at the cola industry. This is what we know from historical data. Given that the person last purchased cola, so we have two types of cola, cola one and cola two. The marketing data has shown that if a person last purchased cola one, there's 90% chance that her next purchase, purchase is also cola one. And uh, obviously there is 10% chance they make a transition to another cola. And if a person last purchased cola two, there's 80% chance that the, ne uh, the next purchase will be cola 2. Okay. And obviously the here means that there's 20% chance that the person make a transition to another cola. And since here we have only cola 1 and cola 2, if the person doesn't purchase cola 2 in the next purchase, means they have made a transition to cola 2. Um, so if a person is currently a cola two purchaser, what is the probability that they make a transition to cola one two purchases from now? Okay, when it says two purchases from now, um, it's not just a one step transition probability match. So let's let's first go through the problem and see what's up. So if I if I want to model this even before going to question one and two, if I want to model this as a Markov chain, uh, I remember the steps. Read the problem carefully. Find out 
what is the characteristic of interest or characteristics of interest that can be used as the state of the system. So what is the characteristic of interest that we want to use here? Mm. Cola purchased? The type of cola? Yeah. The type of cola purchased is our state variable. And what is the state space, possible values that this uh, characteristic can get? One or two. Cola one or cola two. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I want to put together the one step transition property matrix. What is the size of this matrix? It's going to be a two by two. Two by two. Cola one, cola two, cola one. Cola two, okay. Okay, I want to put the uh, probabilities here. So I know, given that the person last purchased cola cola one, there is ninety percent chance that her next purchase will be cola one. That means if I'm purchasing cola one right now, what is the chance that in the next purchase I still stick to the cola one? Point nine, right? That was the number, 90% chance. What is the chance that if I'm purchasing, a, if I'm using a Cola 1 right now, in the next purchase, I make a transition to Cola 2? 10% or 0 0.1? 0 0.1. Because the sum of the row is 1, so if I know one of them to calculate the other one, it's just 1 minus that number. Okay, let's look at the second row. Given that a person last purchased Cola 2, there is 80% chance that her next purchase will be Cola 2. So if you have purchased COLA 2, in the next purchase, you will purchase COLA 2 as an 80% chance. So you have purchased COLA 2. What is the probability that you purchase COLA 2 in the next purchase as well, 0.8? What is the chance that you make a transition and buy COLA 1, 0.2, because the sum of the row is 1, okay? So this is my one step transition probability matrix. That's the one that always, always, always I have to have to be able to analyze any stochastic system. So that's the one that you have to extract from the problem state. Now, what is the question here? If a person is currently uh, a COLA 2 purchaser, what is the probability that she will purchase COLA 1, 2 purchases from now? Okay, and 2 purchases from now. So basically, I want to know the two-step transition policies and and each step can you tell me what is each time step what does time step means here um what it be purchase each purchase each purchase basically is what i call as the next as a transition as a step okay so if i make 10 10 purchase that's 10 transitions either cola one or cola two. So these are transitions between the steps. So the time step basically is specified by each purchase here. Okay. If a person is currently a cola two purchaser, what is the probability that she will purchase cola one, two purchases from now? How do you calculate that? You... You uh, you square the probability matrix, but then you multiply them looking for the L the one one element. Okay, so first, if I want to calculate the probability that if you are right now a cola one purchaser, what is the probability that um. If right now you are a cola two purchases, what is the probability that, that in two purchases from now you are a cola one purchaser? That means two two purchases, two time steps. So I want to find the transition probabilities in two time steps, and to be able to do that, first I have to calculate the transition, the two step transition probability matrix. Okay, so I have to go from one step transition probability matrix to two 
step transition probability matrix okay i need that how to calculate two step transition probability just multiply trans the one step transition probability matrix by itself in other words calculate p2 okay and so that just needs multiplication of this matrix by itself and if we do that if you multiply matrix p by itself the result will be 0.83 i'll tell you i'll show you in a second how you can do the calculations in excel so that for your homework and exam you can do that easily but here i just write down the results so if i multiply matrix p by itself the result is 0 0.83 0 0.17 0 0.34 0.66 okay so that's the result um, now can someone and and again the structure of the matrix is the same as the one so still this is cola one cola two cola one cola two okay can someone tell me what does this number show abdullah are you here yes i'm here can you tell me what this number shows? Okay, so this is the probability that he will transition from, like if he bought cola one now, after mm -hmm. two steps, he will buy cola two. That's yeah, after two steps, yeah. You are a cola one user right now. And after two purchases, you are now a cola two user. Mm -hmm. And two, so that's how we write it, remember? P, I, J, and that's how we write it. So this is P going from cola one to cola two in two purchases or two transitions. That's 0. 0.17, okay? So now it says, if a person is currently a cola two user, what is the probability that she will purchase cola one two purchases from them? If a person is right now a cola two user, what is the probability that two purchases from now, the person will buy cola one? So that's going from cola two right now to cola one in two purchases, and that's point thirty four. Okay. Um, the second question. The second question says: If a person is currently a cola one purchaser, what is the probability that she will purchase cola one three purchases from now? Three purchases. How do we calculate that one? We take it to the third power and look for the element in uh, I need to calculate the three step transition probability matrix or P3, which is P multiplied by P multiplied by P. The resulting matrix will be 0 0.781. Point two one nine. That would be the resulting matrix. Now, if a person is currently a cola one purchaser, what is the probability that she will purchase cola one as well? So again, oops. This is cola one, cola two, cola one, cola two. If a person is a cola one drinker right now, what is the probability that the person is still is drinking cola one three purchases from now? 0.781. So that's this element. So probability that if a person is a cola one drinker right now, the still drinks cola one three purchases from now is 0.781. Okay. Any question, guys? Can you show us how can we calculate that in Excel or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. You can see my screen, right? So let's do this so that this would was point nine point one point two point eight. Okay. So this was our transition probability matrix, the one step transition probability matrix P that we know for this problem. Now let's say I want to calculate P2. I want to calculate this matrix by itself. So I'm going to mark, just copy this. So just know this, the, I'm going to calculate this by itself, right? So if I want to calculate this matrix P by itself, this matrix P by itself, I want to calculate P2. What is the size of the resulting matrix? Two by two. It's a two by two. So first highlight that two. So you have to. So highlight the two by two matrix. Okay. And then equal the function is M M M mult matrix multiplication. So pick that. And it, it says what is array one and what is array two. So array one is this one that you have here, comma. What is array two is this one that you have here. However, at the very end, you shouldn't press enter. We have to do shift, control, enter. And then it fills all these cells. If you just press enter, you only see this cell to be filled and the rest are zero. Okay, so pick the whole map. So let's try one more time. So now this is what, this is P2, right? P to the power of two. Now let's assume I want to calculate P3. So how do I calculate P3? I multiply P2 by another P, right? So what is the result if I multiply B, P2, which is a two by two matrix, by another P, which is a two by two matrix, what is the size of the resulting matrix? Two by two. Two by two, again, highlight a two by two. Equal, function is matrix multiplication, M mod. What is the first array? So let's say this is my first array, which is P to the power of two already, comma. The next array is this one, which is P. And so I multiply a P2 by P. So that's going to be P3. And remember at the end, don't just press enter. Shift, control, enter. That's the result. If I was going to just say emult first, comma, second, and I just press enter, uh, we can change part, we can change part of an array. You can, you get even error. So always shift control enter. And that gives you this match. So no matter what is the size of the matrix, just make sure to specify that. And even your matrices is if they are not uh, like the, like the, you know, you don't multiply a square matrix by a square matrix. Maybe you multiply a three by five by a five by seven matrix. That's fine. Just find out what is the size of the resulting matrix and highlight the cells to represent that. Um, let's say as soon as your resulting matrix is a three by four. Okay, highlight the cells to represent that. Put equal M mult. Pick your first matrix, then pick your second matrix, shift control enter, and you're done. Okay, so you can use that for for the homework assignments. Okay. Thank you. Sure.